In this mini lecture, I want to talk about how natural law can intersect with homosexuality. Natural law type reasoning has often been used to argue that homosexuality is wrong. Okay, and I'm going to kind of demonstrate that by sharing a video. Give your life to Jesus, right? He died for our sins. You know, Jesus, you're a born again Christian. What am I being deceived about? Deceived. The world deceives us. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, right? Well, straight people have lust. Right? What's that? Straight people have lust too, right? Right, but we can have newness of life through Jesus. Right, so what am I being deceived at? Well, do you support this, this agenda here? What, what's the agenda? The homosexuality agenda. Well, 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 what's the agenda? To, homosexuality to, exists. Right, to, to, to promote that homosexuality is okay. Well, it is isn't naturally... No, no, no. Okay, so we see here that... Um, this man who's about to attend the gay pride event um, and who later on says that he's gay um, begins his defense of homosexuality by saying it occurs naturally, right? So he actually is, is even on board to some degree with this idea that what's right or wrong um, is intimately tied up with or determined by what is natural and then this this man who is the uh, christian protester here or uh, i don't know if you call him protester but he's uh, evangelizing um, he is passionate about the opposite view that um, homosexuality is immoral is immoral because it's unnatural have you wrote the Bible says it's unnatural, yes. Is the Bible social science document? Oh, the Bible is truth, right? Right? Is there any empirical evidence? Any what? Empirical evidence in the Bible, or is it just the... Well, well the, ev the evidence that you have and the evidence that I have, right, we both have faith, right? Well, it is right? faith when science demonstrates No, 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 no. It. The science that you have and the science that I have would, would contradict one another. So What's therefore, your science? That's my question. That, that homosexuality is not natural, that it's unnatural. Wait, what's That's your science? Not, well, first of all, if we, just, if we wanted to just take anatomy, I look at anatomy and I know that the penis doesn't go at the anus. Therefore, okay, so he's, he's giving a secular argument now, the, a, a design type argument that the penis wasn't made for anuses. So that's, a, um, now that is true. Um, so no, no biologist is going to say that, you know, the penis was, uh, the penis has the properties it has, so it can <clears throat> uh, penetrate the anus. Everyone will agree with that. The, the interesting question would be the moral one, which is, well, uh, let's assume that that's true. Does that mean that it's wrong to use it for purposes for which it was not designed? Uh, by by evolution or by God or, you know, as we have just talked about in the last uh, discussion. Therefore, if you want to talk about science and just idea, I look at that and I say, well, that's pretty, uh, that's that's good evidence for no, me. I'm gay, but my penis has never right. been in an anus. But you know, you know what I'm You're saying? Assuming uh, what no, I no, no, that. no, no. I'm not assuming. What? I'm saying that the majority of homosexuals. You you talked about evidence, right? Mm -hmm. That homosexuality is wrong. I'm telling you the evidence that I have. Says right. The majority of homosexuals say that, that that the penis is made for the anus. Therefore, there's or is not made for the anus. Therefore, it's not natural. That's all I'm saying. Well, do you know that and so, 60% of gay men have anal sex, but 40% of straight men do? Right, and that's right. It's wrong. Sodomy is wrong. Sodomy in general is so wrong. So are you going to be having these yeah, guys oh, straight people gather? But, but understand, this is, this is for, you could, people My could. Question was, okay, so they move on to other topics. You could watch that. You could watch that video on your own. Um. Um, some philosophers in the natural law tradition are still arguing ag against homosexuality on, on those grounds. For instance, uh, Timothy Shaw, uh, a philosopher in Kansas, has recently uh, published a paper, Why Homosexual Sex is Immoral. And in the abstract, he writes, critics of homosexual activity often appeal to some form of natural law theory as a basis for their arguments. According to one version of natural law theory, actions that pervert or misuse a bodily faculty are immoral. In this paper, I argued that this perverted faculty argument provides a successful account of good and evil action. 
and several objections are discussed. So you see that such arguments are, are still being made. Okay, so I'm going to look at just briefly a few different ways that the different models of what is natural when inserted to natural law theory and applied to homosexuality, what those arguments would roughly sound like and some objections to them. As I write here, I honestly don't care what your views are on homosexuality. That's not what we're really talking about. And it's not my, uh, it, it's really not my business. And I honestly don't care. I'm not going to change your mind about anything. Um, I'm just walking you through some natural law style arguments against uh, homosexuality and showing you some rebuttals. So remember that the first way of thinking about what's natural is the normalcy model. And um, so that argument would look like this when the normalcy model inserted into natural law theory would look like this moral behavior is what is normal behavior for the species. Homosexual behavior is not normal behavior for the species, so homosexual behavior is not moral. Now, um, at, as we have seen in the last lecture, it's very questionable whether or not moral behavior is whatever is normal for the species. Um, until quite recently, slavery was normal behavior for the species, but it's not clear that uh, slavery is morally acceptable. Most of you think that slavery is wrong. Okay. There is abnormal behavior, like being super smart. And that seems to be uh, most of you to be morally permissible. Being super athletic seems very rare, but yet is morally acceptable. Um, the teachings of Jesus or of Muhammad, or of whatever religious leader you follow, if you have one, was highly abnormal at the time, right? Uh, highly unpopular at the time. Nonetheless, um, you know, if you're a follower of one of those people, you tend to think that it was morally okay. So that, that premise is kind of uh, suspect. Homosexual behavior is not normal for the species. That may not be true either. Um, so although homosexual couplings are, are not statistically common, um, and in some, in many cultures, very rare indeed in terms of lifelong homosexual relationships and exclusive homosexual relationships. But nonetheless, over time and space, uh, there was a lot of homosexual sex and a lot of cultures normalized homosexual sex, especially between men and uh, sort of teenagers, teenage boys. So um, as a sort of sexual outlet. Um, and we see this in cultures in ancient Greece and ancient Rome and in ancient India in ancient China and perhaps um, the Aztecs as well. You'll hear reports of this. So it's not it's not all that rare, actually. What about the theological model? Well, let's insert, let's insert our idea of what is natural and the proper function for our sexuality um, as what, what God is reported to have wanted. So it goes like this. God designed us to have only heterosexual sex. And in my notes, you could click a link here and find someone arguing that. But Examples are easy to find of people arguing that. Premise two, so homosexuality goes against God's design. Practices that go against God's design are wrong, so homosexuality is wrong. And, um, you know, you have to wonder about premise one. God may not exist after all. If God exists, it may be that he didn't create us, our sexual organs. He might not have sort of deliberately fashioned us at all. Um, let, let's suppose that he did. It is possible that he didn't care about how we used our sexual organs. You know, so you need to explain all those, all those moves. All right. But even so, one must wonder whether or not practices that go against God's design are wrong, or even practices that are uh, supplementary to God's designs are wrong. So for instance, someone who has sex with the opposite sex and has sex with the same sex, 
um, is still, you know, reproducing or whatever it is that that um, is is supposedly the function of those sex organs. If those sex organs have the function of reproducing and um, the God-given function of reproducing, then this, again, raises questions about the morality of being celibate. But many of those traditions are okay with people being celibate. Okay, let's talk about fitness. One may think that, well, what's natural is what nature designed us to do. Again, it's another design argument. Um, in this case, designed by nature. And so one might argue that homosexuality, since it reduces your biological fitness, makes you less likely to pass on your genes. It's bad because whatever reduces one's fitness is morally bad. Now, in criticizing this, we need to think about premise one. Premise one is ambiguous. One, for this argument to make any sense whatsoever, it has to mean uh, exclusive homosexual acti activity, sex with only people of the same sex. Because if you're having heterosexual and homosexual sex, then your fitness is not reduced. All right. And, and again, that was actually quite common throughout the world that one would have, that men would have, for instance, wives and then, have, and then have sex with um, younger, younger males on the side. Even if we interpret this premise to mean exclusively having homosexual sex, it still may be natural in the relevant sense. For instance, as we see in this article that I'll share with you, it may be that homosexual, the genes that make one uh, more inclined to be homosexual come from having a sort of double dose of genes that really um, increase one's fitness. And, and, and that, that sometimes happens. Uh, it may also be that on a group level, like say a family level, it is adaptive to have some members be uh, homosexual because that um, means more resources for the next generation of kids. So just as you are advantaged by having resources coming from a mother and a father, more advantaged than you would be if you had resources just coming from a mother, you would be even more advantaged if you had resources coming from a mother a father and say a, uh, a homosexual uncle. And so it, it may actually be adaptive on a group level to have some members be homosexual. In which case it, it might be uh, quite difficult to argue that homosexuality is not natural. But even if, even if it is, if it doesn't redound to your fitness, well, lots of things don't redound to our fitness. Being ugly doesn't redound to our fitness. Being handicapped doesn't redound to our fitness. Okay? And, um, you know, just deciding to be celibate, being a, being a loner, all of these things um, make it less likely that you're going to pass on your genes. But, that, but most of us, you know, just intuitively does do those things seem morally wrong to you and if they those don't seem morally wrong to you then this this premise is questionable okay in conclusion we looked at natural law theory we discussed one example of how natural law theory has been used and is still being used to condemn some sort of act in this case homosexuality we have used that condemnation as a case study to draw out the weaknesses of natural law theory or at least you know, those two, two incarnations of it. It is very difficult to say what is natural. Is it what's normal? Is what those things were designed to do, designed by God to do, designed by nature to do, or whatever. And even if we do have a good sense of what is natural and unnatural behavior, it still seems like it's morally okay maybe even obligatory in some cases to do an unnatural thing, all right? So um, it, this, this approach to ethics doesn't map on perfectly to our moral intuitions. Our moral intuitions could be wrong. This sort of approach could be right, okay? But there is some tension between our moral intuitions and 
at least these expressions of natural law theory. So it, if insofar as you feel confident about the intuitions that you're having, it's the theory that has to be tweaked or abandoned.